What's up guys, it's Mystic coming to you guys with yet another YouTube video. Now today we're going to go over Legends of Tomorrow episode 15 titled Destiny. The episode starts off with the opening shot or one of the opening shots in episode 1 where Rip's, Rip arrives and rec tries to recruit everyone to time travel with him and uh, stop Vandal Savage. We find out that Jackson arrives around that same time and he waits until everyone clears. He tries to talk to Dr. Martin and convince him to help him get back to the vanishing point. Uh, at the same time we're taking back into the vanishing point where everyone is in prison. While they're there Mick and Kendra are taken, uh, Kendra is given to Vandal Savage to return to 2166 and Mick is brainwashed and tortured to become Chronos again. They use shock therapy and they kind of force him to become Chronos. It doesn't take long. Um, he's Chronos for maybe about 15 minutes of the show. It's one of the flaws. I want to talk about the flaws at the end of the recap, but definitely one of the flaws of the episode. After that, Rip is taken into a room by Time Master Drews, and the Time Master Drews reveals a huge secret that there is something that's called the Oculus Viewing Chamber. What it does is it provides the Time Masters the ability to manipulate time and bend it at in any way they want. So the Time Masters confess to Rip that everything that they have done, all of the missions, you know, the motivation that he has to kill Savage or stop him was actually manipulated and set by the Time Masters in order to bring Vandal Savage to power. Their ultimate plan was to bring the world together under one rule so that Vandal Savage would have the best chance possible to defeat a alien race called the Thanagarians from an invasion that um, that actually happens much later after 2166. So it's a huge shock to Rip and he is devastated for for a part of the episode he kind of loses hope and you know I think a lot of the, the crew is kind of affected by this because they don't know what to do and a lot of the, the decisions that are made as the episode go on is a repercussion of of this of this event. So we find out that uh, Snart and Sarah are still alive and they're actually hiding in the uh, in the wave rider and uh, they have an argument whether or not to save the crew. Uh, Snart threatens to shoot Sarah However, she's saved by the bell because Gideon is alive and she makes phone calls now. So she makes a call uh, through one of the vintage vintage phones uh, on the Wave Rider and they answer and she comes up with a plan to save the crew and maybe even escape the vanishing point. And uh, one of the big things is that they have a lot of chemistry and I do believe Snart and Sarah deserved a little bit more time as far as their character development went together. Again, uh, a flaw in the show unfortunately. Jackson tries to repair the jump ship with uh, Dr. Martin in 2016 and they go back and forth about the future and you know whether or not Martin should know more about the future. And I thought that was very interesting, but uh, they, they didn't give us too much of that. Uh, there was an easter egg where the time bubble was there, the time bubble from the first season that Eobor Dawn used to or attempted to use to go back to the future, so that was cool. The plan to save everyone consisted of sabotaging a lot of the time ships because uh, Gideon proposed to make a fake time jump so that the Time Masters would order all the time ships to go after them. Now at the same time, fake time jump to the present, back into the vanishing point uh, with all the ships disabled and pretty much blast your way into the prison vault or whatever and free everyone. At this point it's where Mick comes in as Kronos to try to stop them. And like I said, he's only Kronos for like 15 minutes. And at that point in time, he decides not to be Kronos and kills the person that was trying to brainwash him, which was fine with me. As they're trying to escape, they're, they are trapped by a tractor beam, which they're freed from pretty quick because they come up with a plan to use Kronos' authorization codes or his, you know, his pass codes with the Time Master to disable the the tractor beam so I guess that was fine I think a little unnecessary the whole Kronos part was kind of unnecessary except for the part where later on he says he has grown closer to the group 
because he used the group's memory or their friendship to be able to stick on to that uh, that identity he has as Mick and not fully become Chrono. So that's one good thing about him being Chrono's for 15 minutes. Once they're on the wave rider, they don't know what to do because they don't know whether or not the Time Masters are influencing every single thing they're doing. So they decide to stay in the vanishing point because the Time Masters say that the Oculus does not affect anything that's inside the vanishing point because it exists outside of time. Their plan is to blow it up. They find out that there is a supernova power source that uh, keeps the Oculus going. So they decide to blow it up. They mount an assault on the, on the power source to try to disable it. Once they get there, I think this is one of the big things of the show that they do right. All right, this is absolutely a positive. It is the action, the graphics, the choreography, just basically the CGI as well. The CGI is amazing. Once they get there, they're greeted by a bunch of soldiers and perfect timing. Jackson gets there at that time and pretty much saves him from getting killed. From there, he emerges with Dr. Martin to become Firestorm and there's a huge brawl at the end of the episode. They come to a dilemma where there's a failsafe in, in the power source so that unfortunately someone has to stay in order for the for the power source to self-destruct. And uh, Ray volunteers and, and he already knew that uh, there was a possibility he was going to die based on, on Rip and, and the fact that the Time Master showed him parts of the future. So he, he believes he's going to die. But at that point, Mick steps in and uh, knocks him over the head and takes over. He wants to stay. I think that's another thing that they, they did pretty well. Because you can tell that these characters are going a little closer together. Um, as they're trying to get away, Snart finds out that Mick stayed behind and goes back and tries to convince him to leave. And uh, he makes the decision to knock him over the head too and stay behind. Uh, and this is where Sarah and Snart's chemistry comes back in because... They, they kiss at the end, and you can tell that they, they do care about each other. There's a reference to Age of Ultron, or even Pinocchio, if you will, because Snart says there are no strings on me at the end, and the power source blows up. So Snart is unfortunately dead. There's a possibility because of time travel that he's still alive, but I think he'll probably appear in cameos, uh, just like a lot of the other characters when, when they die, flashbacks alternate timelines maybe he'll appear on one of those but he might be dead so everyone is kind of in grieving they don't know what to do once again they try to make a decision and they decide to go after savage one more time uh, without any strings without any manipulation and they know they know they can control their destiny and try to stop vandal without him having uh, the aid of the time masters now as all the fight is going down uh, Van savage actually kills Rip's family, his wife and his son. So that happens and unfortunately Rip finds out that even though all of this uh, happened and that they destroyed the, the power source that it did not change the destiny of his family and that they still die. However, they, they go ahead and try to go after him. Then the episode ends with Savage finding out that Time Master Juice is dead and that he's on his own. However, he doesn't seem too concerned, but I'm pretty sure he knows that, that the team is going after him. Now, the thing I like about the show are the actors and, the, and their portrayal of the characters. I think it's very important and I think they do a really good job. Again, the effects, the graphics, the CGI, the choreograph, the fighting scenes are also very good. However, because I don't know if it's director or screenwriting script or if it's just the fact that the first season is a bit short, that a lot of things are rushed here and there. Uh, for instance, Jackson going back in time, I think that could have been its own episode. Have a Flash cameo, have the Flash come in, you know, help have the, the team at Star Labs help Jackson get back to the vanishing point. That would have been cool to see. Uh, the other thing would be Kronos. You know, it would have been nice to have another episode where they try to fight Kronos, maybe have a 
all-out brawl between the team and Kronos that would have been cool as well. And more character development for Sarah and Snart. I know they try to push it towards the end, but I think they could have sprinkled it on and maybe gave it a little more time as the season went by. It was It's, it's only 16 episodes, but it's these things that you can kind of tell that are kind of rushed. And, uh, and they kind of push in these hour episodes. Uh, however, there's a lot of great moments and I'm still very happy with the episode. And I hope you guys like this recap and review. Now, I will be making a video on the season finale next week. Uh, I still don't know exactly what's going to happen, but uh, I'm sure it's probably going to be great. I'm excited for it. I'm, I'm excited for all the action. Again, guys, if you like the video, you like the recap, give a like on the video. Leave a comment if you have any feedback or any idea. Or if you have any comments on the episode, if you liked it, if you didn't like it. Thanks again for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video.